Hello everybody. Today we are going to look into electrochemistry, electromechanology. And now I'd like to share the slides with you so that you can follow quite easier. Easily. Here, electrometallurgy. You can sit down here. Electrometallurgy, so today we are going to uh, talk about electrolysis, guiding side. As you see, electric energy can be converted into chemical energy. Also, vice versa, chemical energy can be used to get electrical energy. Uh, most of you probably uh, uh, <coughs> familiar with this concept, but the more we uh, talk about it, the better you will uh, develop a uh, better understanding. Electrometallurgy is a branch of metallurgy that produces metals for metallic ores through the use of electricity. Also, and you should know that, electrometallurgy deals with both the use of electricity for various heating processes and the use of electricity to generate chemical changes. When I say electrometallurgy, you don't need to just uh, not understand the electrolysis processes, also heating processes could be understood by the uh, concept of electrometallurgy. And when we say electrometallurgy, we should talk about electro-refining. What is electro-refining? The purification of metals, for example, 99.99% copper, which we call it 49. It could be also possible to produce pipeline copper. And especially in some um, brand names of swatch uh, produce 59 gold especially 59 gold 99.999 percent gold can be uh, produced by these methods also it's possible to produce gold nine silver electric refining is the purification when we say refining when we look at the etymological uh, root of this word electro means electric energy is employed. Refining is purification, fine art. You know, you remember, fine art, refining, purified metal. On the other hand, when we talk about electro winning, it means the extraction of metals from their ores through solutions. For example, copper also can be electro won, zinc, lead, and many other metals can be produced by this method, electro winning. The purpose is to produce metal through uh, aqueous solutions. But it doesn't guarantee 49 gold or 49 copper, 49 metals. And when we look at electroplating, the deposition of a layer of one metal on another metal, for example, rhodium, yes, especially rhodium uh, is applied on surface of rings, pendants, bracelets, etc. Palladium can also be employed. Platinum, gold, silver plating for decorative purposes. Electroplating is, can be applied on circuits. You know, when we use uh, computers, some circuits are coated with gold. Gold is not the best conducting metals. And many people uh, think that Actually, gold is the best conducting metal. Now, silver is the best conducting metal, and after silver, copper. But why? The question arises here why would you use gold instead of copper or silver? Because gold doesn't get corroded. The corrosion reason is very high, and this is the reason people tend to use gold plating. Why wouldn't you use all the material out of gold? Because that would be very expensive, very expensive. So you, we should be very vigilant, be very careful about what kind of material we need to use. Okay, electroplating is like that. Electro winning is the oldest industrial electrical electrolytic process. Electro refining of copper was first demonstrated experimentally in 1847. The commercial plant was patented in 1865, and the first successful plant was opened in Wales in 
70. The first commercial plant in the United States was in session, was uh, started in 1883. So very old process, but straightforward, easy to apply, very clean process, and everybody I think should be interested in such process. Very clean, very straight and straightforward. Okay, let's look at the standard electrode potential. And as you see here, two different compartments. The first one is standard hydrogen electrode on the right hand side. On the left hand side, half cell with metal M electrode on standard conditions. In order to run this reaction, you need to use platinum wire because platinum is inert metal, noble metal, doesn't quite easily react. Uh, with any, any solution, etc. Now, this is the reason why platinum is preferred for this purpose. Uh, actually, this is standard, so it has to be one molar, and the pressure should be one bar, and the temperature should be room temperature, which is 298 Kelvin. As you should remember that we, in the scientific literature, we always need to use Kelvin instead of Celsius degree. All right, and here is the salt bridge, as you see here, and we get a voltage. Why, what happens when we get the voltage? Because there's a driving force between two compartments, okay? Either hydrogen is more noble than the metal uh, present in the solution in the left-hand side compartment, or left-hand side compartment, is more noble than hydrogen. So we get the difference in voltage and using this uh, voltage, looking at this voltage, we can calculate that this metal is precious metal, this metal active metal, or uh, this metal is semi-metal, uh, semi-noble metal. For example, copper is considered to be a semi-noble metal. And silver is noble metal, both noble metal, and copper is semi noble metal. When we look at aluminum, very active, sodium, lithium, these metals are very active actually. Now we are going to look at these metals. There is EMF series. This EMF series, okay, based on hydrogen voltage, voltage, hydrogen reduction or hydrogen oxidation voltage. This value, as you see, two hydrogen plus goes to hydrogen gas, and the voltage is zero. Is it true? Actually, this value is arbitrarily chosen value, hypothetically set to zero volt. Okay, and depending on here, we see gold is the reduction potential is 1.50 volt. So we understand that this is noble metal. You can quite easily, you can quite easily um, get uh, gold from aqueous solution of gold three plus, and similarly, also uh, silver tends to get into metallic form. Iron three plus goes to quite easy the iron two and the voltage value is 0.771 volt or 771 millivolt. As you see, sodium cannot be goes into metallic form. As you see, it's minus 2.71 volt and the also uh, minus 0.76 volt. Okay, so we can conclude which one is active metal, which one is the semi novel metal or novel metal, etc. As you see here, copper, gold, platinum, silver cannot displace hydrogen because their reduction potential is higher than reduction potential of hydrogen. As you see, hydrogen is set to the zero volt, reduction of or oxidation of hydrogen is set to the zero volt. This is our C level. Okay, this is hypothetical value, okay, depending on we design other metals. When we look at 
nickel, um, tin, or lead, these metals can displace hydrogen from acids only, and the other metals, magnesium, aluminum, can displace uh, hydrogen, as you see here, for, for example, magnesium solid plus uh, two water gas, and we will get magnesium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. These are not noble metal, very active metal, but more active metals, lithium, as you see, lithium is very active metal, and this is the reason why we use the lithium in batteries. And potassium, calcium, and sodium can displace hydrogen gas from water, steam, or acids. For example, sodium gets exploded quite easily. Uh, upon the addition of water uh, into sodium. What happens? Sodium reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide in aqueous form plus hydrogen gas. And the bind reaction takes place how hydrogen gas furthermore reacts with oxygen from the air to form water. And this explosive reaction, and this is the reason why we should be very careful while handling this sodium metal. If we have time, but not uh, this uh, term, we can carry out uh, experiment regarding explosive attitude of sodium upon addition of water. And let's look at the Faraday's law. Here, first compartment, zinc nitrate, and as a cathode, zinc, other side as a cathode anode and one molar copper nitrate solution. These are standard solutions. We need to normally a uh, copper behaves as cathode and zinc is anode, but we can uh, exchange the reaction with the help of battery. When we use battery, ladies and gentlemen, we can change flow direction of flow electrons. With the help of battery, electrons goes to zinc, we produce zinc from the zinc solution, and anode, uh, as an anode, copper dissolves into solution normally, and when the help of battery, because we forced the reaction. This is not a spontaneous reaction. With the help of battery, ladies and gentlemen, we create spontaneous reaction. No spontaneous doesn't mean impossible. Sp spontaneous means it can go by without the, uh, any interference of us. But on the other hand, no spontaneous isn't uh, impossible reaction. It means that you need to pay the price. You need to pay the price. There is a price for us to overcome this reaction. Okay, uh, to get this ticket, you need to pay price. The price is here, battery. With the help of battery or any other thing that creates uh, change the flow of electrons, direction of uh, electrons, then you can run the non spontaneous reaction. Faraday's law of electrons states that the amount of any substance that is deposited or dissolved in electrolysis is directly proportional to the total past electric charge. And weight can be calculated using this formula. Weight is equal to current that we apply times mass of metal, one mole, mass number of the metal, times time, which is expressed in seconds, and the Faraday's constant uh, over minus one times n. Uh, over minus one, n is the valence number, or n is the number of electrons uh, dealing with this reaction. And the further constant could be changed, but can be uh, accepted this value 96,485 kilo. Here are the examples. This is copper refining process at Saipusan. This is the one of the most leading 
copper company in Gebzen. They produce copper, they produce uh, refined copper. Furthermore, uh, as you see here, anodic copper is produced. With the help of electrosis, they are going to get the cathodic copper. Four nine copper can be produced. Furthermore, uh, further, I'm going to explain how it can be carried out. Here, refination electrosis. Uh, actually, this is a German word, refination, but in English, refining electrolysis. Sorry for this typo. Refining electrolysis. What happens with the anodic refining? We produce 99.5% copper. This is good for various applications. This kind of copper can be used as an alloying element with lead or zinc can be produced uh, brass, etc., but not electrical appli applications. For us to use for this kind of electric application, we need to uh, run electrolysis process so that using this electrolysis process, we can produce 49 copper, 99.99% copper can be used for this method. Here are the, after the, Electrolysis process cathodes are produced. Here are the uh, electrolysis process. Refining, uh, refining electrolysis of copper sulfate solution. Copper anode. As you see here on the left hand side, copper lost. What does it mean? Step by step, when you run the reaction, copper from the anode dissolves in the solution. And the solution. The concentration of the solution remains constant because copper lost the other side on the cathode, copper deposited. And the, as an electrolyte, copper sulfate about 45 gram per liter and 190 gram per liter sulfuric acid are employed. With the help of electrolysis, one part copper dissolved in the solution the same amount of copper, almost same amount of copper, deposits on the cathode. And for this reaction, we don't need to run, we don't need to apply high voltage. Cell voltage is about 0.2 to 0.4 voltage in some sources, some reference books. It is expressed 0.15 to 0.3 volts. This is have voltage. And the solution temperature is about 50 to 65 Celsius, depending on the uh, plan. Uh, these uh, parameters can be changed, and you don't need to memorize these things, okay? These uh, uh, parameters change from uh, some plan to other plan. Any gold, silver, and antimony. And platinum, platinum group metals in the copper does not play out because the voltage is not enough to dissolve these metals. What kind of metals? Precious metals, noble metals. And the reduction potential is higher than that of copper and the higher than that of hydrogen. And these metals cannot play out, cannot dissolve. Coppers on the anode ranges from 99% to 99.5%. As I said before, you would remember, these are not enough for various applications. We need to further refine them. We need to further uh, purify them. First cathode is titanium and then copper. So what does it mean? The initial cathode is titanium. You can sleep this uh, deposited copper from the titanium and uh, then the cathode becomes copper itself. The conditions changes, okay? And the current density on cells is between 150 to 250 amperes per square meter. As I said uh, before, this is the electro refining of copper at Sarkinsan 
in each plant, these parameters can be varied. So you don't need to memorize them. When the source of EMF is connected a steady current flows in the circuit, then the following happen. The first one, electrons from so electrons flow from the negative terminal of the power supply in Turkish in our south power supply is register by the wire to the cathode. So circuit is made. And the second one, cathode is at a lower potential than anode. Therefore, copper two plus ions move towards cathode, while the SO2 ions, sulfate ions, move towards anode to produce what's going to happen. This reaction produced free sulfuric acid because initially we have copper sulfate and this copper is deposited onto cathode and the sulfate becomes uh, sulfuric acid because at the same time in the anodic reaction water uh, oxidizes to, to get uh, H plus ion and oxygen gas and electrons and the H3O hydronium ion or just proton H plus ion uh, gets connected with sulfate to form sulfuric acid. Copper is removed from the anode and deposited in the cathode as I said earlier. Due to ionization, the copper sulfate solution is dissociated and copper 2 plus and sulfate minus 2. At the cathode following reduction reaction occurs, copper 2 plus with the help of uh, power supply, ready to serve, gets two electrons to get uh, metallic form to, to form uh, metallic copper. These copper atoms get deposited on the cathode. Number four, at the anode, what's happened? The following oxidation reaction takes place. The copper atoms from the anode are dissolved in the solution. Okay, copper from the anode reacts with SO2 to form copper 2 plus, SO2 minus, and two electrons. The released electrons flow back to the positive terminal of the power supply by the wire because we made a circuit. Thus, copper gets deposited at the cathode while the anode loses an equivalent amount of copper. The concentration of copper sulfate in the solution remains unchanged. I would like to repeat this sentence. The concentration of copper sulfate doesn't change, normal doesn't change, because one part dissolves, the other part deposits. And there, there is a balance here. Okay, this is the reason why the concentration of copper sulfate doesn't change during the electrolysis reaction. We will look at the electrowinning reaction of copper. Of course, concentration of copper changes because we the metallization reaction takes place, the copperization reaction takes place. The amount of copper day by day, second by second, decreases. But this is different. This is uh, actually purification process. This is refining process. And this is the reason why one part copper uh, from anode dissolve in the solution. And the same amount of copper, ladies and gentlemen, deposit on the cathode. And this is the reason copper concentration wouldn't change. Here are the copper cathodes that are produced by electrolysis, electrolysis method at Sarkinsan in Gebze. From the, these coppers, they remelted and copper wire production, as you see here from the picture, Copper wire pin machines can be produced, the wire, tin wires, some other things can be produced by this method. And these uh, wires are suitable for electrical applications, electronics 
applications because they contain 99.99% copper with the help of electrolysis. And otherwise, it wouldn't be possible. The electrical loss would be high. If you do not remove impurities from copper and electrical uh, conveyance uh, capacity decreases. Pure copper products, as you see here. Now, let's look into electro winning of copper. What does it mean? Uh, in the electro winning of copper, copper uh, concentration decreases because our purpose is not refining of copper or uh, not purification of copper, just the demetallization. Solution cannot be discarded quite easily. The uh, impurity containing copper cannot be discarded because it contains copper from economical uh, point of view and from environmental point of view. Again, you cannot discard this solution. So what can be done? We can run the metallization process, the copperization process. We need to get the copper out of this solution. How can be done? An electro procedure is suitable for this purpose. After the solution is contaminated with other impurities like nickel, iron, etc., because these metals dissolve into solution. But the voltage, ladies and gentlemen, is too low for these metals to go to cathode. And remember, the gold, silver, and platinum group metals, platinum, rhodium, etc., the voltage are too low to dissolve these metals. And this is the, well, the balance value. This balance value equilibrium value or equilibrium value is uh, enable us to produce 49 copper, 99.99 percent .99 copper. Copper dissolved, the voltage is suitable for the solution of copper. Also, the voltage is suitable deposited on the cathode. And when I say contaminated, impurities are increased day by day because they Nickel, iron, zinc, etc. These metals can dissolve but cannot deposit on the cathode. So we can say that this solution is contaminated with other impurities and the copper electrodes can no longer be implemented. So you cannot run this electrolysis due to the high concentration of contaminations impurities. So electro winning of remaining copper can be carried out and we call it electro winning of copper. The concentration changes depending on the process that is applied, depending on the plant that runs this reaction. So you don't need to memorize these values just for indication, okay? For about 4 gram per liter copper to plus and about 200 gram per liter free sulfuric acid, the current density between 170 to 200 ampere per square meter. The cell voltage is high, as you see here, 1.9 to 2.3 volt. The solution temperature is about 40 degree, and this, uh, this can be changed. Why the cell voltage is high? It's simply because we need to uh, get the electrons from the oxidation of water. And this is the reason the cell voltage is high. I'm going to explain later. Lead is used as anode because it does not dissolve in the acid, sulfuric acid. And the stainless steel is used as cathode in different than electrolefining of copper. In the electrolefining of copper, we use titanium initial anode and initial cathode, sorry. And afterwards, copper becomes cathode, the anode is always copper, as you know, impure copper, copper. Let's look at the electrolysis reaction, electrolysis cathodic reaction. Copper two plus gets 
two electrons to form copper zero. And the A E voltage is E value is 0.34 volts. This is reduction potential of copper. In the anodic reaction, in order to get two electrons from anodic reaction, the easiest way oxidation of copper at the anode, oxidation of copper takes place whereby oxygen gas gas is formed and proton plus in hydrogen plus form we, we call it hydronium ion hydronium ion furthermore reacts with sulfate to form sulfuric acid and the total cell reaction can be calculated when we sum them together when we add them together copper two plus plus water hgo goes to copper zero plus oxygen gas plus hydronium ion e voltage is plus 0.89 minus 0.0592 ph so this reaction depends on ph value of the solution what else we can say about that the purpose is to get uh, uh, copper from the solution because of environmental reasons because of economical reasons and the copper concentration day by day decreases because we are getting metal out of solution and whereby we produce sulfuric acid this sulfuric acid can be used in various applications goes back to uh, solution And let's look at the electrolysis of silver nitrate solution. Here, uh, the electrolyte is silver nitrate, and the electrodes are silver plates. The process of electrolysis is identical to that of copper sulfate solution, except for one important difference. Copper has valency of two, while silver has valency of one. The direction at the electrodes are silver ion, gets one electron to form silver at the cathode so silver gets deposited at the cathode while the anode loses an equal amount of silver the concentration of silver nitrate in the solution stays the same similar to copper electrolysis copper sorry silver plus nitrate to form silver nitrate at the anode and this gives off one electron in the electrode deposition of silver one electron circulated for depositing one silver atom at the cathode, but in the case of copper, two electrons circulate for deposition of one copper atom. Furthermore, we are going to look at, but not today, later, next week or other weeks, uh, we are going to look at the electrolysis of aluminum. In the aluminum, three electrons are involved and the mass of electrons aluminum is much less than that of silver and copper and this is the reason production of aluminum is very costly let's look at the electrowinning of zinc zinc electrowinning from zinc surface solution is the usual final stage in the recovery of zinc from sulfate flotation concentrates as with copper Zinc is deposited on the cathode and oxygen is evolved at the anode. Why? The oxidation of water takes place in order to get three electrons. The three electrons taken, uh, takes, is taken by zinc to run the reaction. Okay, where is oxidation? Let's remember, where is oxidation? There is reduction. And zinc gets electrons and deposit on the cathode and the water oxidized to give so two electrons and the evolution of oxygen is carried out the electrolyte typically contains 55 to 70 gram per liter of zinc as zinc sulfate and 150 to 200 gram per liter of sulfuric acid and is held at 35 to 38 
Celsius. This lower than that of uh, copper. A current density between 400 and 800 ampere per square meter is employed, and this gives a cell voltage of 3.5 volt. But normally, it is almost impossible to uh, to run this reaction, and we need to supply voltage. And the, with the help of this voltage, non-spontaneous reaction becomes spontaneous. We need to pay the price. We need to take the ticket, and the ticket is here, 3.5 volt. The overall reaction converts acrazine sulfate to zinc metal and sulfuric acid. Because of, due to the oxidation of water, uh, we get oxygen gas and hydronium ion. Hydronium ion uh, reacts further with sulfate ion to form sulfuric acid. The concentration of sulfate acid increases day by day. The acid is then recycled to the leaching stage where zinc oxide is dissolved. There is a loop, ladies and gentlemen. I'm repeating. The acid is then recycled to the leaching stage where zinc oxide is dissolved. The anode in zinc electrogram is made from lead silver alloys. Oxygen evaluation is promoted on these alloys and lead solution is avoided. Remember, lead cannot be dissolved in sulfuric acid or sulfuric acid has no action on lead. This is the reason we use, we tend to use lead. Lead is an expensive metal and the corrosion resistance is very high, considerably high. The cathode is aluminum. More than 80% of the 2009 world zinc production of 11 million tons was produced by electrowinning processes. So electrowinning is everywhere. Electrochemistry is everywhere. Let's look at this question. A zinc cathode is used to electrolyze an aqueous solution of zinc sulfate. What will give off at the cathode under atmospheric pressure, hydrogen or zinc? The over potential of hydrogen on zinc is 0.7 volt. Here is the calculation. Reduction potential is minus redundant. Sorry, reluctant to uh, reduce to metallic form. This is the reason the value is negative. Minus 0.763 volt. Let's look at the hydrogen. You know, hydrogen is more noble than zinc, but something happens. What happens is over potential of hydrogen on zinc is 0.7. So normally hydrogen is more noble than zinc, but during this reaction, something weird happens. The over potential uh, concept is, uh, is to be mentioned here. The hydrogen becomes less noble than zinc due to over potential. The evolution potential of hydrogen at equilibrium on cathode is here. Suppose the pressure of hydrogen is 1 atm. The aqueous solution is neutral. The pH is 7. The hydrogen concentration drops to uh, 10 to minus 7. Then the uh, normal voltage becomes minus 0.414 volts. Consider the over potential of hydrogen on zinc the polarized potential of hydrogen evolution becomes minus 1.1 volt. So this value is lower than the deposition potential of zinc. Therefore, it is zinc that forms on the cathode first. What does it mean? Normally, ladies and gentlemen, normally zinc is active metal. Normally, the hydrogen reaction takes place spontaneously. But due to evolution potential of hydrogen at equilibrium of the cathode, it's, it cannot be reduced. And the 0.7 volt becomes less uh, noble than zinc. And this is the reason the reduction potential drops to uh, from 0 to 0.4 volt and minus 0.4 volt to 
minus 1.1 volt due to uh, evolution potential of hydrogen and this value in effect lower than the deposition potential of zinc therefore it is zinc that forms on the cathode so due to over potential of hydrogen zinc is more difficult to electrowin than copper because zinc lies considerably above hydrogen in the electrochemical series remember emf series thus the evolution of hydrogen from an acid with zinc sulfate solution is energetically favored over zinc deposition as i explained earlier Hydrogen evolution on a zinc surface is a very slow process. It occurs at a high overpotential. And hence zinc can be electrolyzed deposited from acid solution. And you should bear in mind that when we increase pH value of the solution and reduction potential of hydrogen decreases. This is important thing to be remembered. Hydrogen reduction potential is set to zero, 0, 0, 0. This is our C level, you would probably remember. Okay, but when we decrease the concentration of hydrogen, which means that pH value of the source increases, then the reduction potential of hydrogen decreases. And this is the reason it's a, it is possible to form for us to get zinc other than hydrogen. Normally, Hydrogen wouldn't let zinc to be deposited on the cathode. Due to these factors, when we play with these parameters, we can ensure that zinc can be electrode deposited from acidic solutions or from neutral solutions. But equal to metal ions in solution can play out as well because zinc is an active metal. If some other metal and greater than the more noble than zinc these metals goes to cathode so we need to eliminate these metals if they are below zinc in electric chemical series this include antimony arsenic cobalt copper germanium nickel etc these elements contaminate the zinc product if they are present in significant quantities they can also promote cathodic hydrogen evolution in the cathode hence diminish the current efficiency of electricity deposit this means that this solution needs to be purified. This solution needs to be refined before electrolysis. Purification of the solution is achieved by adding zinc powder, resulting in removal of impurities. When we add zinc to the solution, generally we encounter such a solution a containing copper and Cadmium. When we add zinc powder, what happens? Zinc replaced with copper. Copper drops. Copper precipitated from the solution, and the concentration of zinc increases because our purpose is zinc refining electrolysis process, and it wouldn't bother us to, to increasing to increase zinc concentration. But the concentration of copper decreases as well as the concentration of cadmium decreases. And this point is important. And the current density, here is you now cathodic potential. The cathodic potential of copper is 0.40 volt. And when we look at zero point, the reduction of hydrogen and reduction of cadmium and reduction of zinc and the you know the line gives us the hydrogen evolution during the reduction unique electrolysis of copper hydrogen reduction cannot be seen cannot be observed because the copper is much noble much more noble than hydrogen on the other hand hydrogen is Noble, uh, more noble than cadmium, as well as more noble than zinc. But the hydrogen evolution is expected to, to be observed. During the 
over voltage of hydrogen, it is possible for us to produce cadmium as well as zinc from aqueous solution. This phenomena uh, can be seen down to manganese. Manganese can also be produced by aqueous solution, but after manganese, it is impossible for us to produce metals. Instead of these uh, aqueous electrolysis processes, we need to apply fused salt electrolysis or molten salt electrolysis, like aluminum. Aluminum can be produced by molten salt electrolysis. As you see here, at the cathode, zinc 2 plus gives two electrons to form zinc 0 at the cathode, and the sulfate at the anode. At the oxidation of water takes place, and what does it mean? Oxidation of water gives us oxygen gas at the anode and hydrogen ion. And electron, this electron is taken by zinc to form metallic zinc. And zinc, the total reaction is zinc sulfate plus water becomes metallic zinc, sulfic acid, and oxygen gas. These are, there are some questions, but unfortunately, I do not have the path, graphic path to, uh, to solve these problems, but further. I, hopefully, I'm going to get a graphic path and I'm going to solve these problems for you. For, for, uh, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Now, that's it for now. Thank you very much for listening to me. Bye.